Welcome to Electron Line. In order to be able to find the moment of inertia or the second moment of area of a irregular surface or an irregular area that we can subdivide into different areas, we need to understand the use of the parallel axis theorem a little bit better. So we're going to revisit it to show you how we can find certain moments of inertia relative to the center of mass or relative to any axis. So we're going to start off with a simple long object that has length L and width W. Since we don't know the mass, we're going to utilize the area to find the moment of inertia. So we call it the second moment of area. And notice that we can call them equivalent to one another simply by replacing M by A, the mass by the area. And the moment of inertia of a long object like this, rotating about this axis at the end of the object, is equal to one-third the mass times length squared or one-third the area times length squared. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to find the moment of inertia at the center mass and we're going to find the moment of inertia at some other arbitrary point B. In this case we'll call B one-quarter the distance from the end. Now what's different here is that typically we use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia at any other point once the moment of inertia of the center of mass is known. But in this case, we don't know what the moment of inertia is for the center mass, but we know the moment of inertia at some other point. So we're going to relate the moment of inertia of the center mass relative to the moment of inertia at A, and we're going to find the moment of inertia at B relative to the moment of inertia of A. And you can see then how that's done. So starting out, we can say that the moment of inertia at A is equal to the moment of inertia at center mass plus the area, because we don't have a mass, times d squared, where d represents the distance from A to the center mass right here, which in this case would be L over 2, half the length. Then we can take this equation and solve it for the moment of inertia at the center mass. So I cm is equal to I A minus A times d squared. Now be careful, this is area, this is not point A. So maybe I'll just call this A prime, A prime, A prime, so that we don't confuse things here, that this is a different A than the location A right here at this dot. Now all we have to do is plug in what this is. So this is equal to the moment of inertia at A, let's call it A prime. So this is equal to one-third A L squared minus the area times d squared. Now in this case d is going to be L over 2. So L over 2 quantity squared. So this becomes one-third A L squared minus one-fourth A L squared. The common denominator is 12, so this is equal to four twelfths. AL squared minus 3 twelfths AL squared, which means the moment of inertia from at the center mass is equal to 1 twelfth AL squared or 1 twelfth ML squared if we know the mass. And so you can see that we can find the moment of inertia at the center mass using the parallel axis theorem once the moment of inertia is known at any other point. Now we're going to try to find the moment of inertia at B. And first we're going to use the center of mass moment of inertia in the normal sense of using the parallel axis theorem. We can say that the moment of inertia at B is equal to the moment of inertia at uh, the center of mass plus the distance from the center mass to B, which is this distance right here, B, plus AB squared. The moment, the area or the mass times the distance from the center mass to the new point squared. So now we can plug these in. So this is equal to 1 twelfth A L squared plus B is 1 quarter. So we have A times 1 quarter the length squared. So this becomes 1 twelfth A L squared plus 1 sixteenth A L squared. The common denominator in this case is 48, so this is equal to 4 over 48 AL squared plus 3 over 48 AL squared, together is 7 over 48 AL squared, and that's the moment of inertia of our new point B. 
But what if we want to find the moment of inertia at B without using the center mass moment of inertia? Can we do that as well? Can we do it in reference to A, or in this case, A prime? Typically, it's not something you want to do, but sometimes you don't have a choice if you don't know what the moment of inertia is at the center mass. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the same equations we did before. So we can say that I at B is equal to I center mass plus AB squared, but now replace the moment of inertia at center mass by this equation right here. So we're going to write now that the moment of inertia at B is equal to I center mass, which is the moment of inertia at A prime minus AD squared, and then we still have the plus AB squared. And now I'm going to write in a format that makes this quite interesting. So here we have the moment of inertia at B, which is equal to the moment of inertia at some other point, A prime, which is not the moment of inertia at center mass, plus, and let's see here, maybe I want to put the A first, I'll factor out an A, A times, I'll write B squared minus D squared. Now this is quite interesting. Notice that B is the distance from the center mass to the new point I want to find my moment of inertia at, and D is the distance from the center mass to the point at which I knew the moment of inertia. So here we have plus A, or yes, plus A times B squared minus D squared. So we can always use that equation as well. Now when we plug in numbers, we should get the same result as we did before. The moment of inertia at A prime is right here, which is one-third AL squared. Plus A times B squared, which is one-quarter L. Oop, I got ahead of myself. This should be L over four. Squared minus D, and D is a half L, so L over two squared, like that. And hopefully that gives us the same result as we got before. Let's find out. So this is equal to one-third. Now the common denominator, well, we'll find out in a moment. So we have one-third AL squared plus A times. We have one-sixteenth L squared minus one-quarter L squared. So now we have to add all those together. And the common denominator in this case will be, it looks like, 48 again. This is equal to, 3 goes into 48 16 times, so that's 16 over 48 AL squared. This would be plus 3 over 48 AL squared minus, and that would be 12, 12 over 48 AL squared. Let's see now, we have 16 plus 3, which is 19, minus 12, which is 7, and that's what we're expecting, 7 over 48 AL squared, which is the exact same result as we got before. So this is interesting and very useful. Normally, we use the parallaxis theorem to utilize the moment of inertia at the center mass and then move it to a new position. But sometimes we know the moment of inertia at one position, and now we want to know it at a different position. For example, we know it at A prime, we want to know the moment of inertia at B. And so therefore we can say that I at B is equal to I at A plus the mass or the area times B squared minus D squared, where B squared is the distance from the center mass from the position I want to know the moment of inertia at, and d squared is the distance from the center mass to the position where I know the moment of inertia already. And that is how it's done in a clever way, not utilizing the moment of inertia of the center mass. That's how we do that.